Balake. Where is Balake at? My name's Blake. Do you want to go to war, Balake? I'm for real. A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is here with Kelly Copter, special guest. How are you doing, Kelly? Hello. I'm really good, thank you. It's very good to meet you in person. <laughs> So for everyone watching, Kelly has a YouTube channel called Kelly Copter. So we can say Copter is not your real last name, right? No, it's very much a pun. <laughs> uh, Kelly Copter is an amazing name. I absolutely love it. How did you uh, come? How did you arrive at that using Kelly Copter? Um, honestly, I think I made my channel just for fun in lockdown. So there's no uh, crazy thing about it. But I just wanted a funny name. That's literally <laughs> Okay, so it's not like a nickname your friends call you, they don't call you Kelly Copter. <laughs> okay, before I forget everyone, here's a little welcome back to some SPTV. Um, always good stuff, being as suppressive as possible. So Kelly, uh, I, I don't know, it feels like it was about a year ago now I saw your videos. Uh, so you, you created your channel just for fun during the lockdown. Uh, yeah. You already had a bunch of content on your channel before you did some Scientology videos. And yes. your videos are so high quality on the production value. I just, they're, they're amazing. I love them. And for those of you watching, yeah, I did put a link to your channel in the description down below. You did a six part series on Scientology. Really, truly incredible. Production values, um, uh, phenomenal. And uh, in preparation for this interview, I, I watched all six of them for the first time before I'd only watched the first one. And I thought you'd done a six part series just about your story, but really just part one is about your story. Yes, yes. And the remaining five parts are just breaking down Scientology at different levels. Yeah. So I wanted to just talk to you about your story. How, how old are you now, if you don't mind my asking? I'm 28 years old. 28 years old. And you were actually fully born into Scientology, right? Yeah. So uh, both of my parents were in it. My uh, mum was in it from a really young age because her dad was in it. So I guess that makes me a third gen on that side. And my dad went in as a teenager um, off his own volition. Um, he was a competitive cyclist and someone he was cycling with told him um, that he could like get his injuries healed quicker with uh, Dianetics. So kind of got him in that way. <laughs> So what are some of your earliest Scientology memories? Um, so, I mean, there's a few. I did a lot of um, e-meter auditing as a young child from about age six. Um, and I received something when I was young, uh, again, when I was six years old, which I akin in my head very close to an exorcism. Um, I don't know if there's a, a real Scientology word for it or what, but that's what um, I remember it as because um, they had been in Scientology for a while um, and they were having some sort of some problems with it. Like they weren't uh, doing as well in their business or they weren't getting the gains from it that they were expected. So um, they said, you know, you need to look around you for a suppressive person. Um, and then they pulled me in for a sec check, which I had at age six years old. Um, which I remember some of it as well, actually, because it was very odd. And um, yeah, they said, we think she's suppressive and uh, you need to handle or disconnect from her. Uh, uh, this is, this is, this sounds batshit crazy, even for Scientology. And hey, it's one I of the reasons I, it's one of the reasons I wanted to do this interview so that so that people watching this who have similarly crazy stories can come forward and say, no, 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 no. That really is <laughs> how these kids as young as six, seven, and eight are treated. Now, I know there's people going, what are you talking about, Aaron? You, you, you were in it. How, are you saying that's not how it was for you? Yes, I'm saying that's not how it was for me. There was a, a similar um, for me, at the crazy and different Scientology parents do Scientology differently with their kids. And uh, for me, the crazy as the craziest that got was just being forced to do OW write ups. So OW write ups is, is o, o means overt in Scientology. Overt is a bad thing you've done. W means withhold. Withhold is what happens after you've done a bad thing and you have a big secret, essentially. And in Scientology, it's very common when someone's in trouble to make them sit down and write down on paper all of their overts and withholds in, in a high level of detail. 
essentially to save the auditor time during the sec check so that in a sec check, you've already gotten off the easy stuff you can remember. Now they're digging in for the deep shit. <laughs> so as a child, I remember being uh, forced to sit down and do OW write-ups and it was, it was insane and it was ridiculous and I hated every moment of it. I don't remember being subjected to sec checks and I don't remember being told I was my mother's SP item. So give me as much detail that you can remember about that because this really is bonkers. Um, okay. Um, I don't know where to start really with it. Um, so in terms of how much time I actually spent in those organizations and things, um, my dad was on staff, so he worked in the org for a bit. Um, he wasn't in the Sea Org or anything, just working in the um, in the actual org himself. He had to do- Which, which org, Kelly, by the way? Uh, Manchester. It this been is Manchester. all Manchester. And actually, let me let me just jump in with a, a quick question here. Um, 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 shit, I literally just blanked, blanked <laughs> my own, blanked my own brain. Um, okay, let's paint the picture real quick. Okay. At six years old, how many siblings? You we're not an only child, right? No, I had two. I have two younger brothers. <laughs> okay, how much younger are they? Um, so they're about like one of them's like a year ish younger than me. Another one's two years younger. So we're all quite close together in age. Okay. So even at six, you've got two brothers in the household and, and your parents are together. So it's all, it's all five of you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And is your, are both of your parents, are they just public Scientologists at that? Let's at, when you're six years old or are they staff members? Um, so I think at that point they had, um, moved over to become public so yeah they will have become public by that time I think maybe when I was three-ish they must have switched over um because they don't pay very well and they needed more money to you know get up the bridge so that's right oh this was the question I was going to ask you when you said they pulled me in for a sec check is it your parents sec checked you or your parents brought you into the org so someone at the org could sec check you yes they brought me into the org so somebody else could sec check me wow Okay. So when it sounds like your parents were getting some kind of a PTS handling, you get identified as the possible source of suppression for your <laughs> parents. Uh, I mean, honestly, batshit crazy. What, to, as detailed as you can recall, what happens after that? Um, so after that, um, you know, I, as far as I can remember, I then had sort of very regular, um, sort of handlings on the e-meter had to do those confessional things like very very often I don't want to say weekly but it felt weekly <laughs> um they were they were very often and then I was kind of put to work so I was sort of um tasked with doing all of the sort of chores in the house um uh, when I got older I would be sort of looking after my brothers and things like that um yeah but I, I basically would kind of go to school come home and clean all night and then maybe do an e-meter session or maybe um or maybe not you know <laughs> um and uh, I did get enrolled on um a course um overcoming ups and downs I didn't do it I got they bought it I didn't do it um because I was very bored by it all <laughs> but um yeah so they they thought that I had some kind of um like they would be like well, the mental health profession would call this bipolar, but we we call it this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, so overcoming ups and downs in life is an introductory Scientology course yeah. that uh, tends to be the one out of all the intro courses tends to be the one they kind of want people to do like a number one or number two. So I guess what I'm trying and I realize memory can be uh, memory yeah. can be. A, a tough thing, even as an adult, much less as a child. And what I'm really trying to uh, drill down on here is were these guys literally telling you, you were the suppressive influence on your parents or is that just what it felt like they were saying? So to they told my parents that I was the suppressive person and my then God. they told me what that was. And I was like, wow. <laughs> okay. Um, oh my God. So, so when you talk about being um, given tasks and chores and everything, this wasn't just children doing chores. This was like your amends or whatever for yeah. all the suppression. And this is what your parents are telling you. 
Yeah, and it was very much like um like the the thing the phrase I heard most often was like get your ethics in. That was the thing I heard the most. Um and yeah, it was like, oh, if I could show that I was being good and trying to, you know, clean everything, be be a good child, like then, you know, maybe I would get away with not being called like evil, um, evil SP, trying to ruin everyone's life. Um, which um I, I didn't believe that um ever. I, I was like, what? <laughs> um, you know, but um, you start to when I was younger I did start to feel like maybe I got this I'm doing it without realizing it or uh, maybe there's something there like why would that why do they do they keep saying this to me um, yeah so I tried to do whatever I could to kind of keep keep them happy uh, I, what, you, what you just said I've heard people who have been put on the RPF uh, Scientology's like gulag rehabilitation camp for Sea Org members who are considered to basically be acting suppressively. I've heard them say something very similar, which is I didn't feel like I had evil intentions towards Scientology or the organization or L. Ron Hubbard. But they, so many people were telling me so often that I did and, and saying that the e meter indicated that I did, that I guess it must have been below my awareness. Yeah and, yeah. and my goal then came to be to figure out how it was true. What was it that I was missing? Because clearly all these people couldn't be wrong and I'm right. Clearly I must be the one who's wrong. Clearly I must be evilly motivated. And just the idea of that being run on a child like that is just sickening. Absolutely sickening. I think when I was like maybe like seven or eight, I um I tried to like stop talking. I was like, okay, clearly whatever is going on is out of my control because I'm not trying to do this. And I literally was like, right, that's it. Words are done. <laughs> um, um, and that did not work. I was still having evil intentions, even though I was silent. So now I said before we went live that after watching your first full video, yeah, the, the fir your first part of your, the full video of your six part series, uh, it seems like your mom, if you don't mind my saying, is a particularly wretched type of human being. Um, and now we've got the Scientology component in all this, and that does what it does to families and children. Uh, but there is more to that story with your mom, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, she was in Scientology from a really young age. Um, her dad was in it. Um, as far as I know, they had their own problems, which I won't go into, but she um, was an alcoholic. So we had to sort of deal with that as well, um, which um, just made her quite aggressive, um, angry and violent and stuff. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was very difficult to live with her and um, I've still not spoke to her since, um, since I left. Um, the, the last thing she said to me was out of sight, out of mind. Wow. When you mentioned, uh, you know, just a little bit ago that she was an alcoholic, honestly, to yeah. me, that made some of the things you said in your first video actually click. Cause there, there was so much of what you were saying that I was like, even in Scientology land, this yeah. is insane. But when I try to imagine what like a full blown Scientologist alcoholic parent might do, I go, oh, I get it even more. And now I like get it. <laughs> um, you said you haven't spoken to her since you left. When yeah. did you leave? However you define that. Um, so I turned 16 uh, in 2010, I believe. Yeah, 2010. Two months after that. I was told I had to go um, out of the, the home, out of the house. Um, um, they didn't kick me out onto the streets or anything. Um, I, I was moved into a uh, bed sit, um, for, which my dad like paid for for a couple of months um, until I could sort my own uh, finances out. I was still in school. I was doing my exams and stuff. Um, What's a bed sit, by the way? Oh, so a bed sit's kind of like um, sort of like a house share. Um, so you'll you'll get a room in a house, and other people have rooms in the house too. So I lived with 
all adults. Um, nobody spoke English there. Um, and there wasn't like a front door lock on the like the main door to get in. So there was it was just open. Um, and it was quite I found it quite scary there, like um had like a flat roof and I would hear like people doing like drugs on the roof and stuff. Like uh, it was it was just quite a scary place. Is this house, is that a normal thing in the UK? Like I've never. Uh, yeah, people can can enter into like a house share situation. You basically pay rent for one room in a in a house. Okay. Okay. And so you were sent there at 16. He paid for a few months. How the hell are you supposed to support yourself at 16? Well, that's what I had to figure out. Um, you know, I was a bit like uh, shook, I guess. Um, but I had been at a school for a long time at this point. Um, I went to a bunch of different schools because we would like move house every year. But um, this one I'd been at for a long time. So I knew some of the teachers and things. Um, and I basically asked them, what should I do? Um, what do I do here? Um, and they uh, helped me um, apply for like educational funding so I could kind of pay for the room and still study um and um i then had to get like a solicitor's uh, go to a solicitor um because i needed um legal estrangement which is like a sort of divorce from your parents um and i needed to hand over uh my what's the word like care of me needed to be handed over to somebody else hmm. not like adopted or anything but guardianship guardianship that's the word yeah so um, what was the word you used before? Estra um, did estrangement you say or emancipation, so, estrangement, same, same thing. So I'm not an expert on this, but I thought in the United States, if you were emancipated, not only did your parents no longer have custody of you, but you're actually legally considered an adult, even though you're not the age of 18. Is it different over there in the UK? Um, I think it is. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, I spe it was with my school anyway. Like I couldn't... Um, you, you need like a permissions to do things from from your parents for things like uh, going to places or trips and things like that. Um, so uh, I needed an adult signature regardless um, of that, whatever the laws are, I'm not 100% on that. <laughs> so did you actually get the estrangement completed? Yeah, so um, I went to a solicitor with um, the like deputy head of my school and um, we sat with her and I basically had to tell her what what had happened and and um, what was going on. And she sat me down and she was like, look, if um, if they don't agree to this, um, then you might have to take them to court. You might have to sit in a courtroom with them to pull that through. Um, so I was really worried about that. But they did agree to it. Um, they signed me over to an adult they had never even met before um both that, of them they both agreed to this yeah unbelievable and your uh, what's shocking to me is that well first of all thank god you had adults in your school caring yeah. enough to help guide you through this but that and i'm just trying to compare it to like what what do i think would happen in the united states child protective services would step in and remove you from the custody of your parents and then you'd probably end up in a foster home not that any of that sounds better no. Um, so, but, but for you, they helped you basically get emancipated from your parents. Someone took over guardianship and were you living on your own? What happened after that? Yeah. So I've lived on my own since then. Um, uh, at I, 16 though, the, the 16, like the, the adults yeah. in your school helped you get this separation, even though someone had guardianship over you, how are you living on your own? Um, Honestly, I actually, I don't know, social services were not involved in it. I don't know if it's, um, I think, I don't know if it's being uh, between that 16 and 18 years old. There's, it's like a weird mm. gap for social services for some reason. Um, and because I had been sort of put into a place um, and then figured out the kind of other steps, like the funding and things like that managed to sort of make it work. Um, but yeah, I was living on my own. There wasn't really anywhere I could move into, um, you know, and that's also quite a, a big ask of any, any of my sort of friends and things just be like, can I live with you? Um, so no, I lived on my own then. And, um, 
after I left school, there was like a period of time um, where I wasn't in school before I went to university. So maybe it was like, what, two months, six, six to eight weeks kind of thing. Um, and I did actually go stay with a friend um, for that amount of time. And they still have a room at their place for me to this day. <laughs> wow. When your parents, when you turn eight, 16 and your parents are like, okay, time's ticking, get ready to get, get out of here. Was that still a carryover from them saying, you've basically been suppressing us all this time and the only reason you're still here is because you were a child? Or is it just some, is there some aspect of them just being horrible, horrible parents? Like, I, I'm not, I'm trying to understand this because even from so, a Scientology perspective, it's, it does not make sense. Yeah. So, um, uh, they, by the, when they kicked me out, I, they had left Scientology at this point. They had left. They'd already, they were already out of Scientology. Yeah. So they, they left when I was about 14. Um, okay. and, um, we had obviously had our history of how things were. Um, you know, I met, I did mention it in my video, but I think like um, they were really like overwhelmed with how much they had been sort of lied to because they were really bought into all of it. So then going online, reading all these mem um, ex members stories, seeing everything that people were saying, like they were honestly like obsessed with it. Um, can you remind me around what year this would have been? Uh, what year would it have been? Two, 2000 and like eight or nine, 2008, nine. Okay. Um, you know, so they were looking at that stuff, um, uh, like in forums and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I just feel like that if they had sort of come to me and gone, NSP is not a real thing we were wrong. I think it just would have been too much. You know, my mum's still drinking, probably more so at this point. Mm. Um, she was fighting with me um, and her mental health went, you know, went down the drain a little bit. Um, and she basically uh, had, I found this out afterwards, but she had told my two younger siblings basically that she um, would have killed herself if I stayed there so she had to cut contact with me and I don't know if just the whole years of you need to handle disconnect handle disconnect just it was like well maybe that was still an option I'm, I'm honestly not sure but that's that's how I kind of look at it now incredible um I, I guess in some way I said you know your mom's alcoholism at least in my mind goes okay I understand the sort of insane behavior that can create I have a harder time understanding uh, how your dad participated in any of this or, you know, permitted it. Uh, is there any insight you have about that? Honestly, it's something that we still sort of fall out about. I would say he was very passive to um, some of that stuff and participated in some of it too. Um, I think she was more manipulative and, had sort of more cards if you get me she would be like this is what's wrong and this is what's wrong um and he would often just kind of go with it agree with her um but he he never really stood up and fought for me or um back to my corner it was they were a sort of team but i mean they're not together anymore um so <laughs> so if they left scientology around 2008 2009 um how much longer did they stay together? Um, oh, that's a good question. Because um, they, they split up like in the years where I didn't have contact with them. Um, I want to say maybe six, eight years, somewhere in that time. Um, they still were together. Could be less, I'm not sure. But um, yeah, say six. <laughs> okay. So well, let's go back to sort of the childhood age when, when you would in a normal scenario be experiencing the normal school experience. Yes. I know in your video, you mentioned that you spent some time in the Scientology Greenfield school, but before yeah. that, did you have any normal school experience? Yeah. So um, I went to like five different primary schools because um, we moved house quite a lot. Um, so I went to sort of a different school every year. Um, it seemed to be. 
Um, and yeah, we went, we moved to East Grinstead for like, it was only maybe like half a year really. Um, but they were doing like some courses there. They thought it would be good to live close by. So for that time I was there, they sent me to Greenfields. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, Greenfields is the Scientology school closest to St. Hill. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think it's maybe like 10 minute drive. Like it's quite close by. Um, so for the viewers, St. Hill is the main Scientology base in the UK. Uh, it's in East Grinstead, Sussex, or is it actually West Grinstead? I found out. Is it actually West no, Grinstead? It's East, East Grinstead. It is East Grinstead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's a Sea Org base. It's an advanced org. It's uh, it's the continental management. It's the location of the continental management offices for the UK. And so, but how far is Manchester from, from St. Hill? Oh, I mean, it's far. <laughs> Couple I mean, is hours it hour, drive, it's hours? <laughs> Couple hours know. drive, yeah. Okay. I'm geographically challenged even when it comes to the United Same. States. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, so your parents go to St. Hill for services and you're put into the Greenfield school, which is the same school that Claire Headley was. Yes. In I've heard. Time. Yeah. I've heard. So what, uh, what, what age do people, do kids start school over in the UK? Like five years old? Yeah. Yeah. Five years old, five, six. And how old were you when you went to Greenfields? I would have been seven, eight, seven, eight years old. How did that experience in Greenfields compare to your regular school experience? Well, it was, it was different. Um, <laughs> is it a, is it a boarding school? Uh, yeah, well, it's like an independent, like our school days were pretty like normal length from what I remember. They might extend into the evening slightly. Um, but as far as I'm aware, we didn't stay there overnight or anything. Um, we were just in the day school part. I think there is a, a full board thing you can do, um, but I didn't, I didn't do that. So you would at least go home and stay with your family at the end. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, tell me about the Greenfield School. So, right, there's, there was, it was a strange, a strange experience for me. So I had been to normal schools, lots of them public state schools, like, so I knew kind of what the deal was, you do your English, your math, science, all that jazz, great. There was quite different. Um, I learned really quickly that I had to hide my face if I was going to yawn, because then they would like throw a dictionary in front of me and be like, you need to look for all the words you don't understand. So I'd literally be like, you know, like <laughs> trying to trying to hide my yawns, which was, um, yeah. So we did loads of that word clearing stuff. Um, we, um, yeah. And uh, they, the, I mentioned it, I think the other day, but the, um, we used to have to like clap, for Elrond at the end of a lesson. So the first time this happens, I'm sat there and I'm looking at everyone like, what is going on? And I don't clap, right? I'm from Manchester, I ain't doing it. Like, so I don't clap for him. And they're like, you know, what, what are you doing? I was like, well, you know, I'm not a Scientologist, freedom of religion, no? Like, I'm not one. I'm here to learn, but I'm not a Scientologist, so I'm not clapping for him. <laughs> It was very reasonable. <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> um, wow. So, um, you know, I can laugh about it now, but, you know, I didn't realise it would get me in so much trouble. I think maybe like two or three people laughed at my situation. Um, they also got in trouble. Um, and I remember they sent us outside after school and we had to like, um, it's a really weird thing. I don't know even what where it's come from or what the you know what the what they would call it if there's a word for it but they literally made us kneel on the ground we had like little summer school dresses on there was a big pile of like tiny little stones we had to like scoop them up and then just move them to another pile for no reason whatsoever um you know, so I was like, this hurts my knees. Like, what's the deal here? They're like, you know, do it faster and then you won't have to do it anymore. Um, and we did like running laps and um, like cleaning and stuff, which I didn't do in any of my other schools. <laughs> That's okay. weird. See, I've never really understood what Greenfields was partially because 
so many former Sea Org members and the former second gen members from the UK talk about Greenfields that in my mind, I've always thought it had something to do with the cadet org. And that maybe, or maybe it's just that the, some of the cadet kids were sent to the Greenfield school, but I've never truly understood how it fit into the Scientology puzzle there. Was there, was it only Scientology kids in this school? I'm pretty sure it was. Don't quote me on it. I was eight years old and, you know, there for six months. As far as I was aware, um, it was like, if your parents were doing courses and in courses all day, then you could be sent there um, to learn and you'd be there. Um, that's. And is it a real school? Apparently it is. According to their website, it's a real school. Um, I don't... Uh, I've, I've looked at their like Ofsted reports and stuff um, because I do not remember, you know, reading like the great Gatsby or doing any of those things that we'd normally do maths and stuff. No creative writing. It was, um, you know, it was lots of, you know, here's some clay. We're going to learn about planes or whatever. And, um, you know, again, uh, looking up words, um, that you didn't understand for whatever text we were looking at that day. So, because I'm thinking I, it's hard to imagine a real school getting away with like, okay, it's two thirty. Get the kids out to the rock pile. It's time to it's time to work on the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and and even the Scientology schools here in Clearwater that are like you know accredited schools or whatever, um, they're gonna have they're gonna use Scientology's like applied scholastics curriculum. Yeah. But they ain't doing no three cheers to LRH at the end of the, the class period. <laughs> it was weird. I was just like, what is going on? Um, you know, and I because I had been to public schools as well, like, you know, I had lots of friends that were um, Muslim or Christian or any of that. Like people had different religions. I was like, oh, cool. So you'll tell me about your God. But you, know, I don't have to, like, believe in your God. Cool. But that's what you believe in. And that's what you believe in. But with Scientology, it was like, oh, no, this is the only answer or else you're literally evil. It's like, OK, well, it's different, isn't it? <laughs> wow. Do you happen to remember just for those six months or whatever that you were there? Were you studying actual Scientology courses? So that is where they put us on to the um, they put me and my two brothers onto a course, which was my overcoming ups and downs. And then um, the they did learning how to learn um anyway. you know and so you did overcoming ups and downs at greenfields no not at greenfields at saint hill while i was at greenfields oh i get it i get it i get it um, but i never completed it i didn't even read it like i did tell them as well like because they you know they put you in the the office -y thing with um whoever's trying to sell you the course got my parents either side of me and they're talking to me who is a child be like yeah, so we really think you would, you know, benefit from this because obviously I'm an adult at eight years old in a very small body. Like that's how they saw it, um, you know. And I, I was like, okay, I'm not allowed to lie. Like lying is really bad, and I really don't want to do this. But they're gonna be mad that I don't want to do this. So I tried to be like diplomatic. I was like, look, you know, it's a lot of money. Um, I, I don't really think I will believe in it. I don't really think I want to do it. Um, but, you know, the, the reg was just like, well, we're going to put you on it. That'll be £600, please. Um, and we get sent to literally like the library to start studying. We were off. We were like, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I can only imagine what sort of uh, trouble the kids, the kids who are at St. Hill doing courses against their will get up to. Yeah, we, we did leave. Even in the orgs and stuff as well. I, I You literally used to sleep in the orgs sometimes. Like um, when my parents worked there, we'd literally like stack chairs up, like try and sleep. Um, there's a job there, though, that honestly, whoever has to do it, I feel bad for them. It's like a, it's like a little tiny room that's got loads of CCTV cameras in the back. And I kid you not, it is a square I literally, even as a kid, I remember going in there like, someone's not supposed to like actually sit in here all day, right? <laughs> really? <laughs> wow, unbelievable. Okay, so so that so you're only at Greenfields for six months. Um, your your parents are only at St. Hill for six months. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the things that really struck me about your 
your story, the one video that you did, because I thought the reason that you had done, remember, I misunderstood. I thought you'd done a six part series about your Scientology yeah. story. And I was like, oh shit, she must've been in Scientology. She must've done the whole gamut. And then one of the funniest things about your video um, is how you were sort of never really doing the Scientology that your parents were doing and wanted you to do. You were always like, kind of the, the outcast here. You don't actually mention your brothers and, and how involved they were or were not. But, um, and I was like, oh, okay. So the remarkable part of her story is how Scientology affected her life through her parents. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily that you spent a lot of time personally doing Scientology. Uh, I thought it, it was boring, I'll be honest. Like the, um, um, actual courses the lectures i've heard so many of them any car journey you can guarantee those tapes were on <laughs> so boring like i was like this is awful um but i think honestly the only reason i, I couldn't get into it was because um i was being told what i was thinking i was being told i was thinking evil things and I literally like um I, I said it in my video but like every time I had to confess something, it was literally news to me. Like it was the first time I had heard it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I found it quite hard to get on board with it. Um, I learned a lot of the words, a lot of the terminology um, from them. But, uh, yeah, and we did get homeschooled for a little bit as well after we came back from Greenfields, moved back to Manchester. Um, my mum took all three of us out of um, public school and was like, yeah, I'm going to homeschool you. This is going to be great. Um, they bought a sauna, which got put up in the in one of the rooms. Um, literally, we had like a basically like a Scientology room in our house, um, which had all the books in, everything like that. Um, and they, she would try and teach it to us. Um, and what was the there's one other one she tried to teach me i think it was the pts one um so you, one of the intro courses i think so yeah i think she tried so, to, get me to do that one so there's personal values and integrity and overcoming ups and downs in life are usually the ptssp over related ones um uh, as far as the intro courses go i feel like that's what it would have been overcoming ups and downs which is the one you said you remembered being put on at saint hill that overcoming ups and downs one and then personal values and integrity is the one that's more focused on ethics and overs and withholds where overcoming ups and downs is more focused on PTS and SP. Um, but did your mom try to put you guys through like a home version of the Purif? Yes. <laughs> no way. Yeah, she did. Um, like she had done it. So she was like, yeah, it's great. It's amazing. She loved it. Um, and she was like, you guys should do this, you know, children have loads of toxins of like you know <laughs> but yeah we um I don't I we were in there for a good portion of the day I don't think we did five straight hours I'll be honest but it would have been an hour two hours whatever a day um and we would take loads of this niacin stuff um which made you like skin really red you get really itchy from taking it um and then you come out you'd be like well done here's a drink of cow mag, which is the most disgusting thing I've ever drank in my life. <laughs> um, and you drink that and then there you go. You know, you're getting rid of all your toxins. Brilliant. <laughs> I was shocked when we came, my wife and I left the Sea Org, moved here to Clearwater and I saw in the nutrition stores that actual people are buying this cow mag shit. I'm like, why would anyone drink this shit in the real world? And then I, I tried it once. And I was like, oh, this is a little different than Scientology version CalMag, where you're literally drinking it straight with the vinegar and everything. This is just <laughs> what? This is just like pow <laughs> powder dissolved in water with, you know, maybe some artificial sweetener or something. That's a, that's a little oh, different. Oh. But um, what about your brothers at this time? Are they, uh, what's their Scientology experience at this time? Um, so I wouldn't say that they uh, were signed on to things. You know, they were they were kind of similar to me in that they didn't um, then go and, you know, take a bunch of courses or try to go up the bridge or join staff or anything like that. Um, they weren't SPs, lucky them. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, they were very much, they kind of went along for the ride, if you get me, you know. Um, and they were young, so... Mm -hmm. um, 
yeah and by the time they'd left they'd maybe be like what um 11 12 years old so um yeah they didn't have to do too much they did do the learning how to learn stuff you know um learn all about the dinosaurs and the flat earth beautiful <laughs> <laughs> okay so when you come back from saint hill and your mom's like hey we're all going to do homeschool uh, uh so again you're still around eight years old or yeah. ish eight nine whatever um, how long do you do homeschool for before you end up back in real school? Um, I believe we did maybe a year and a half around that time. It, again, not that long. Um, and I think after that is when we went over to flag. So, um, yeah, so we'd been, yeah, about a year and a half of homeschooling. Um, and which I'm surprised, like no one came and checked, like, you know, you would think that there was some sort of rule in place to check that the kids are in school, but apparently my mum's a qualified teacher. So there you go. <laughs> I forgot that there was a flag portion of your story. Did you go to flag during that homeschool period? Uh, yes. Um, it would have been like maybe shortly after. I think I was maybe like, yeah, it'll be around the same age. I'm so bad with the ages. I can't, it's all one big that Scientology blur in it. Um, but um, well, that means yeah. your parents forked over. I feel so bad when I hear like, like people from out of the United States having to come to flag because not only are they paying for the insane price of doing services at flag, but they've got the international travel and everything. So was it you, you, your two brothers, your mom and your dad all came to Clearwater? Yeah. So we had to go there because my dad was doing the OT levels. Um, he got to level five, OT five. Um, so even after he learns about Xenu, he was like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> um, you know, so um, I didn't know if, I guess he had to do them there for the, um, to have the, the right auditors um, to teach him it or something. I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, that's actually yeah. that's actually interesting that someone who lives so close to St. Hill would come to flag for OT5 because you're supposed to be able to, well, not supposed to, you can do OT5 at St. Hill. That's what those AOs are there for is so that you don't have to come to flag for that. Um, that. So that's a shitload of money that he spent. It, it could have been he was maybe doing one of the other ones then. It might have been a lower, um, one of the other OT levels then, potentially. Mm. I don't know. I don't know his specific... Uh, I get it. I get it. Yeah. There's, there's a number of things that could have been. So how long are you guys, how long were you in Clearwater for? Uh, we were there for um, about a month, I believe. Um, we'd gone a few, a couple of times um, for like a couple of weeks, but uh, this particular time we were there for a month. Um, I did not see my parents really while I was there. They were having these like 12 hour audit sessions Um a day for whatever they were doing there. So honestly, we were left to our own devices. I'm not going to lie. I had a great time. Like it was, there's a swimming pool there. We've got good food there. You know, I was like, yeah, okay. Like it's sunny. I'm all right. Like, <laughs> um, Hey, as you know, long as they're not forcing you to be on course and you're running around doing your kid thing, I imagine it would be a good time. Yeah, it was a win. Like it was great. <laughs> but um, I'm actually surprised though. They didn't force you guys to do, do a course. Yeah, well, I, I wonder if like the money came into it, like they had to take out sort of credit cards um, and they ran up some debt with that um, to pay, you know, I think they ended up paying about £250,000 to Scientology um, overall. So, um, yeah, wow. I wonder if, and also the other course, the other course they tried to put me on, I literally, I literally ran away. So... <laughs> <laughs> um. Were you, was your family well off when you were young? Um, not especially. Um, my dad obviously was working in the org for a while, so he didn't really have loads of money. Um, and my mum was in the org as well. Um, he did leave and go into like technology type business thing, stuff with computers. Um, and I guess he made some that way, but they took out like credit cards and, and got loans and things to pay for it um because they thought it would sort of work out in the end you know um and i think that is a way that they get you to pay like um uh, a bit of debt now but you're going to be so much better off afterwards that this debt's going to mean nothing and you'll be able to 
pay it back no worries because you'll be operating at a higher level or some something like that <laughs> interesting so they come to flag for whatever it was it doesn't really matter um here for you but you guys came to flag more than once yeah yeah unbelievable to, to me that sounds like there's uh, your parents had money uh but you know, it, it's something like you can have a Scientology family that makes a lot of money, but they live like they're poor because they're giving all their money to Scientology. But did you feel growing up? Did you feel like we're poor? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, oh, okay. um, you know, getting like new uniforms and stuff like that. When I'd swap schools, I remember once I had swapped schools, and they wouldn't get me a new uniform for the new school. I literally wore the <laughs> uniform from my old school at the new one, and I was just like, okay, um, you know, this is kind of how it is. Um, I think any of those kind of expenses were expenses. If it wasn't paying into Scientology, then it wasn't a big deal. We kind of ate really basic food and things like that. Um, they did move into a really nice house eventually. Like, um, but, you know, we moved every year. I don't know why we moved every year, but we did. Um, so. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So then other than, the incredibly strange and abusive parental dynamic. Do you eventually get back into school? Well, you do, right? Because then by yeah. the time you were 16, you were back in school. Is life for you relatively normal from then on until 16, other than the, the, the home situation? Um, yeah. So I, the, I went to school, um, moved like towards Lincolnshire when I was about 11. Um, and I, I stayed at the school that I was at for like, it was the longest place I've ever been to a school for. Um, and I did sort of all of the years till I graduated there. Um, and I liked, I liked the school, like things were fine, but I would come home and it would be like, you know, chores or overts and writing that kind of stuff up depended on, you know, where we were. It wasn't like that every day, you know, sometimes, it was like, you've really changed. Like you've got your ethics in, you're doing all right. Sometimes we were there. It just never lasted very long. Um, and it was kind of, it was almost like a little, it was like a double life for me. Um, I didn't tell people what was going on um, because, you know, what the heck was I going to say? Like, I, you know, I didn't want, um, I also thought like my mum would find out I'd get in a lot of trouble um, if she was like, why have you told your friends about this? Um, so yeah, I basically had a sort of double life. I did well in school. I was all right. Um, I had really good friends, really good teachers. Um, but yeah, just being at home was very, very different. <sighs> okay. So let's go back. Well, we've sort of already gotten back there to the point where you're 16, you're in school, you're getting legally separated from your parents, someone else is taking custody. <clears throat> the thing that from a Scientologist perspective that I go like, what the F is that the Scientology officials, it, it, in my mind, the Scientology officials themselves in a normal situation here would step in and go to your parents you guys are creating a legal problem for Scientology. What is wrong with you guys? What the hell are you doing letting non-Scientologists come in or creating a situation where non-Scientologists have to come in and intervene in your family situation? This is going to create a legal problem for Scientology. This could create bad press for Scientology. That, that's what was going through my mind when I'm watching your first video. Is but I'm they've like, left at this point, so they've left already right so you know it's actually probably that's the best case scenario because i mean if it was the case they were still in like you know they tried to recruit me and get me out of there before send me to the sea org um and that stuff so i'm glad that they weren't involved um with that but i can, I can see how that would be a problem if if they were still in it for sure right 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 okay so then scientology is sort of out of the equation by the time all that stuff is happening uh the the horrible family dynamic is still there they're essentially have abdicated all of their responsibilities as parents what the hell is your life like between uh that age and now i don't know are there any major events or milestones there or has it just been from then on, you've just been making your own way and 
make anything um, happen? I mean, like that year that that I was um, out on my own, like when I was 16 was, was really odd. It was a really strange time. Like, um, I was really lucky cause I had, I had really, really good people around me, um, kind of kept me, you know, kept me going to school, um, made sure I did my exams and stuff. Um, and I kind of ended up with a goal, like I need to get out of this town. Like I want to move to the capital city. Like that's what I wanted to do. But I was I was really down about it. Um, I still kind of wanted to try and make things right with them. Um, and I went through like a sort of period of depression. I had an eating disorder for a while. Um, and um, when I was 17 years old, I had tried to take my own life at one point. And all of that, um, after all of that, I, I, I came back out of it with really good friends who had stuck by me, um, teachers that were supporting me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do do this school stuff, get out of here, move to the capital city um, and, and make a life for myself there. Exactly what I did. <laughs> so um, I'm really lucky, but I'm also I'm also very proud of myself, too. So that's amazing. Um, is the capital city London? Yes. <laughs> what do I know? I grew up in a cult. It was just a good guess. Uh, <laughs> um, did you go to college or uni university? Yeah, I went to university. I um, during school, I'd like really been up in the music gig life. Like I loved I joined up all the choirs, like every band, because I, I would try to stay in school till like nine o'clock at night if I could just to avoid going home. So I got quite good at that stuff. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I was like, right, I need to go to uni. Um, I went and studied like theatre. So I studied like musical theatre. I don't do musical theatre now. Um, Why not? Well, I don't know. It's a hard life, you know. They're like, (laughs) you got to do auditions. Like it's stressful. Um, So no, I don't don't do that as a job. Um, (laughs) It's tough. But I enjoyed like... I love doing, I love music and um, I love theatre as well. So as a degree, brilliant. It'll get me to London. Um, you know, I graduated some time ago now, like 20, uh, 24, no, 2016, 20, 2016. Yeah, 2016, I graduated. So um, since then I've worked here, lived here. Um, yeah, and, and really, really lucky, I feel, um, just to have been, always surrounded by amazing amazing friends and people that didn't give up on me uh people that encouraged me and when things were like hard and I I was feeling uh, really down um said no you you're you're a good kid like um and you're gonna do all right so that's incredible so because I guess uh, again when I was watching your first video there's there's things I was inferring that that weren't actually in that video. It didn't quite occur to me the first time I heard your story that when your parents got back in touch with you, it wasn't because they'd left Scientology. Because that's usually how these stories go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd already left Scientology and they were still being horrible parents. So when your dad finally gets back in touch with you, what's the impetus for that? Um, so it was dur- during the pandemic. Um, obviously, everything had stopped for me as well. That's the first time I'd stopped since um, since I left school. I'd been working a job, everything from sixteen till that till twenty twenty. So um, it, yeah, his life had kind of stopped as well. So um, he he sent me an email, um, just like, hey. Re- just reaching out um wanted to know how you were doing um i hope we can kind of have a conversation um which i was really really shocked by so because i just had heard nothing for so long so um and i i did respond to him um and um i was having i, I don't know what the um like if it is this or not but i because I had stopped, I started like having sort of a PTSD, not Scientology PTSD, but like traumatic um, flashbacky type things of stuff I remembered from when I was younger. Um, 
and because I was not allowed to go outside and um, that triggered me really badly like um, remembering what that was like being con- like kept inside confined to a room um, that that really triggered me and I was remembering this stuff and so he got in contact with me and I was like I I really really need to confirm some of these things that I'm remembering um you know like like an exorcism like I I'm sat here remembering I had an exorcism and going but really though like really Did that really <laughs> happened you know and and I asked him and I asked him I was like did did this happen he was like yes this did happen um and I um yeah was starting to have a conversation with him about Scientology and sort of what I'd, um you know what had what had happened since how he kind of um got out what he thought about it and stuff and I'm quite a creative person I think so um I was just like okay like this is a lot (laughs) um and I just wanted to sort of lay everything down um I did some research you know found out some more about like the courses and all of the horrible abuses that happened which I did not know about growing up in it um and I was like okay I'm, I'm going to put this together then and put it out there so people can can see it um because if there's someone else that was like me um or if somebody's in it and they're trying to like get out of it I feel like there's so much information on the internet there's countless videos loads of blogs there's all sorts you can look at um and rabbit hole down into which is what happened to my parents and it drove them a bit like crazy with it because there was just you know every day they're checking it what's going on now what's going on now um so yeah I I think uh I just wanted to lay it down and go all right if someone's doing it how do they get from here to clear how do they go up the bridge what's on it obviously I'm not an expert and I'm sure I didn't quite as eloquently put it as Sir Elrond but <laughs> you know, I wanted to be like, right, this is a bit where you do the aliens. This is what's going on. <laughs> you know, like, a, like an overview, a, a freebie overview. Um, well, look, I mean, your videos were spectacular. I mean, yes, there's parts in there that I was listening to that I'm like, oh wait, that's wrong. But then, uh, but then I didn't realize at the time. Yes, but that's because you're just you were putting all that's that's new information for you. You weren't doing all this from memory. You had just done research. So of course there's going to be things wrong. Everyone yeah, gets definitely. stuff wrong about that. I have to ask you about this exorcism thing. Cause that's one of the things okay. in your first video that I was like, well, hold on that. That's not right. And so let me pick your brain. Okay. Go but, for it. Okay. Cause you, there's a part where you go, um, uh, that they were, your mom would sit you down and, you know, do these sessions on you and basically try to get rid of your body. Thetans. And I go, body Thetans are OT three. So, that that's a, like so you're eight years old though or six or seven or eight so whatever you remember happening combined with what you've studied combined with answers your dad gave you has left you with this overall impression well you use the word exorcism yeah what is the memory that you have of what you experienced um okay so um i would have been on my bed um and my dad was the one who performed this um he had his um obviously had done his ot levels so i guess he knew about uh the body oh. patterns and things um and he he said it to me in an email he said um they basically had to get the um evil personality to to leave the body and a nice one could like take the place of it is the words he used um so and this was, was some shit. Yeah, your... and it's it's like tone forty, yell at the body thetans to go. So I found it very traumatic because I I'm like, what is happening? Like I'm being yelled at, but you know, it, it for me it's it was a really like scary thing. Um, what was actually happening to me now makes me really laugh because what on earth? You know, you're yelling, you're yelling at aliens to leave the body. Like what? what the heck but that tone 40 stuff is loud it was scary (laughs) oh my god that now makes perfect sense so like this is an incredible byproduct of the fact that scientologists at the lower level have a completely different understanding 
of what Scientology even is than Scientologists who've done the upper confidential levels. And this is what happens when you have some, your, your dad who's like, well, I now have the real secret knowledge and I'm now going to try to use that knowledge in a way that, to be honest, doesn't make any sense. But on someone who has no idea why I'm doing this because they don't know about body thetans. Now, even in the Scientology world, what your dad did would be considered completely squirrel and offbeat practices and absolutely insane. But now I get it. So your dad's like, yes, I did that. Yes, yes. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Because the truth is that is an exorcism. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and I'd seen the movie as well. I was like, this is the same. Like, come on. Um, Unbelievable. And it didn't work either. So. <laughs> Do you have any memory of whether you had to like end that whole thing by being like, oh, it worked. I feel like the evil spirits are gone. I no, I remember that I, I it was very quiet at the end. I'm pretty sure I because I was crying, upset, like you know, I'd just been yelled at for however long. Um, and you know, I think I just I think I once I'd stopped crying, I think they left after that. So. Oh my god, that is batshit crazy. Yeah. Um, okay, I see a few questions here or comments. Scientology has a disgusting legacy of family destruction aside from their human trafficking. Does Scientology value family in any way aside from recruiting? Well, what do you have to say about this, Kelly? Um, well, I, I remember being asked to join the Sea Org um, when I was 12. It was, uh, and you know, I guess a thing that they must do routinely um, in that. So they could, my parents could focus on the coursework and stuff and they could get me out of the way. Um, I don't believe that they um, value sort of familial relationships or else why would they be so quick to, um, you know, weaponize this disconnection policy? Um, why would Why would they do that if they cared about you being in touch with members of your family. I don't believe so. Yeah. Um, I, I have to agree with you. Now, a Scientologist, of course, would go, oh, what? Of course we value family. There's an entire dynamic dedicated to it, the second dynamic. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's the same thing as saying you believe in God just because there's an eighth dynamic. You don't. Um, and, you know, I, I, exactly like what you said, if you're a Scientologist and you're in good standing and your family members are in good standing, it's very easy to say, yes, we value family. Look, we're all a family. We see each other. We talk to each other. Yeah. We love each other. We respect each other. Yeah. Until one of them is not in Scientology anymore. And you don't really give a shit that they're your family member, do you? Yeah. So, so you caring about them as family members was really just a matter of convenience because you were all on the same page with respect to Scientology. But once that story changes, the family story changes too, doesn't it? Yeah, and I think to have um, children as well, just children existing within it are sort of kind kind of a nuisance uh, for Scientology. Um, they do those big like gala ball events and things like that. We would literally not be allowed in. Like me and my brothers would not be allowed in. It was only adults that could go um you know to those big gala things they did they did one at saint hill i remember we were literally just left on our own um so yeah i feel like children are kind of a nuisance um as part of it until they're old enough to you know join the sea org or provide something back to scientology i reckon yeah Exactly. Okay. Apostate Alex says, Kelly, you're so strong um, for sharing your story. And uh, Kelly, you're going to be doing an interview with Alex on his channel as well, right? Yes. Yes. We'll be doing an interview on Sunday. Thank you very much. Alex. Very, very cool. Ken's channel. Thanks for telling your story. Move forward, create your own happiness and don't blame yourself. You can't control the parents you get, but you can control you moving forward. Amen. Very Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for that, Ken. Lydia Von Stretchclaw, you've done amazing. You've done amazingly, Kelly. Much love. You guys are all so nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe, keep up the good work, Aaron, and the SPTV crew. Why Kelly, I really SPTV crew now. <laughs> um, okay, so actually, I think you answered a question I was going to ask, which is: so, what prompted you after all these years to do? those videos on your channel and was it because 
your dad had gotten in touch and filled in some gaps for you and all that. Is that what it was? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was very sort of um, like cathartic for me to do it. You know, I thought I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll put it into sort of an order that makes some sort of sense to me. So I, I have an understanding of it, but I want to share it so that um, it might at least help somebody else. Um, I, um, yeah, I did it. I did it mostly for me and other people that would see it. I I'd get people commenting in like, why is not more, why is people not seeing this? Like whatever. I didn't massively promote it or anything. I just kind of put it together. Um, you know, and I, I love to video edit and stuff as well. So it was just like a really kind of creative way I could sort of cope with all of it and process what, um, yeah, what I had learned and what I'd been through really. Yeah. Well, it's one of the things that blew me away about your videos is um, it's very hard to be natural, well, to, uh, Scientology would say, natural, relaxed, and friendly on camera. It's very, very hard. And you are amazing on camera and your production quality is excellent and your editing is fantastic. So, I mean, I hope you do more with it for sure. Um, is it, uh, I, I mean, I guess I've only been focused on your Scientology videos. Yeah. Have you been posting a bunch of, con a bunch of Honestly, content? Honestly, no, I haven't. I am, um, after I'd finished it, I was like, what where do I go from here I'm not even sure like um I really love the sort of report and uh, research and report type thing that's really fun for me to do and um will be good to explore some of the topics as well um I know some people have asked for me to come back and do some videos on Scientology there are a few things that have happened since I've made that that I'm like oh this could be interesting um, or what just want to share some things about it. We need to keep asking where Shelly is. Where is she? Um, <laughs> screw, where is she? You know, and I think um, pushing those things forward is is never going to be a bad thing. So it's something that oh, I want to fight my corner on it, but I, I'd never say I'm a Scientology channel. I'm not an expert, um, you know, like yourself, Aaron, or um, Mark or Claire or Mike or Leah. Like I don't have that same experience that you do um but i was really glad that i could put it together and present it in a way that um yeah that just might be helpful and i, I will do some more reports on it but I'm, I'm certainly not um a scientology channel like you guys are yeah um, well i'll tell you what i mean one of the interesting things about <clears throat> people who have had any experience with scientology talking about it is that everybody's experience is their real experience. Like I know you said, I'm not an expert. You're an expert on what your experience was. That's for sure. You're an expert on what it's like to grow up in a Scientology family. Um, you're an expert on what it's like for Scientology. To, you, you know, like no matter what's happening, your opinion on it is as valid as, as anyone else's. Um, and it's one of the things that I think could be so exciting and fun about a lot more former Scientologists doing channels is you get to hear everyone's unique and individual perspective, even if they're all talking about the exact same uh, event or information or whatever development is, everyone's going to have a different take on it. It's one of the fun things about me, Mark and Claire and Mike talking about things is you'll hear us say shit, guys, we've known each other for so long and you'll hear us tell stories that someone's like, what? I, I never knew that. Or, or you'll hear us disagree on something because we just have a different experience or perspective on it. So, yeah. um, Anyhow, I think your stuff is absolutely fantastic. If you do do any stuff, I'll happy to like do a reaction video to it. Or yes, it or, please do it. Or, there, <laughs> or is, any there is um, I, I saw you posted the um, uh, the like the Zenu recording, um, <laughs> right? And great that it flips up to the South Park one. The in one of the episodes that I've done, I think it's um episode four, at, like eight minutes in. Um, I tried to set his little chat about Xeno to sort of like a really bad movie trailer. Um, I use like stock footage and things like that. So if you ever want to have a bit of a laugh, go for it, watch it at, <laughs> at your leisure. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching. I hope this has been educational, informative and all that good stuff. And uh, thanks Kelly for doing this with me. I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you everyone as well. Bye-bye everyone. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you
you could click what's inside here. If you have six squares or not, subscribe right here. Bye!